Hey everybody, Patty Ann here, welcome. Hey, today I'm gonna to do something that some of you have been asking me to do for probably over a year. Remember when I did a whole series using this manual on essentials in Brilliance Essentials? And so many of you said, can you please, please do a series on using um, Stitch Artist Level 1? So that's what I'm going to do today and maybe for the next five lessons. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you know when I add another one of these sessions to this. So as I said, I used this manual before and you may be wondering where in the world did you get the manual? I'll show you in the software I got where I got it. And what I did was I printed it out double sided and then I took it to Staples and they bound it for me like this. So it's perfect, so I can write my notes in it and just keep track of when I need to look up stuff. However, sometimes if you need to look up stuff, it's a lot easier and faster if you look it up online, and I'll show you that as well. So anyway, let's go to my computer screen and get started. Remember, Stitch Artist Level 1 for Beginners. Okay, just for a quick heads up, this is where I am in my manual, but what you're seeing on the screen is what you can find in the software. In my manual, it's page 120, 120, and in the software, it's where it says Product Stitch Artist, the interface, and we're going to start there. So in order to find that, if you're not sure how, you would come up here to Help, help <laughs> and then you're in the manual right away come right down here to where it says contents and come down here to where it says stitch artist and then just click on the interface is the one you want right here so if you're not sure what I just showed you can always rewind it at the end of this to find it well, basically, these are the things we're going to go over here. So I'm going to minimize this. And I made this thumbnail that you've already seen, probably. This is class number one from the Embrilliance platform. We're going to go over design pages, designs, objects, properties, panning, guidelines, and show and hide. Seems like a lot, doesn't it? But trust me, it'll be fun and you're going to learn so much. So let's get rid of this now. And if I can hit delete, I need to move some things over. Delete. Okay, here we go. So here we are in Embrilliance, and I happen to be only in Stitch Artist. And the way I know that is if I come up here to Help and Serial Numbers, you'll see that the thing that I have available right now is Stitch Artist. If I purchase something else, I might be given the serial number. I would copy and paste this into here and then say set and it would bring it down here. Continue and it would ask me a question or two and then it would tell me I need to restart my computer, not my computer, the program for it to work. So let's get started on this now. We're going to start with designs. OK, so a design is a group of objects that are all collected together. For example, if I come up here to this circle tool right here and I click on it, notice what happens over here. Automatically it put in a design in the objects panel. Now right now it only has a little dot there but recall, I got the circle, so if I draw a circle and I could hold down my shift key to make it stay perfectly circular, now in my design panel, I have one object and that object is a circle, but there are no stitches on it. It's just a line. So in other words, if I were to go to the stitch simulator to watch the stitch out, <laughs> There's nothing to stitch out because there aren't any stitches. So I want to get back to Stitch Artist. Forgot to tell you that in the very beginning. There's two different things. There's the Create Mode, which is right here. And then this is the other regular mode. So Create Mode allows us to add stitches to this, but we'll work on that in a minute. 
object view is normally docked on the right hand side of the program and you'll see individual objects that make up a design so I could add another object and let's say I want to add a square now I have two objects and I can even add as many as I want I could come over here look at the star and there is the star so notice this is the objects panel and in the objects panel we have a design and that design is made up of three things three objects and notice this little thing right here it has a minus sign if I click on it it makes a plus sign that plus sign right there lets us know there's something inside of here that we can see so I can click on this now notice that right now I have the star selected and you can see in one of the programs I used to do a long long time ago they talked about these little things being marching ants excuse me well you can see a dash a dotted line around here if I want to click and select the line instead I can click on it over here in the objects panel if I want to click on the circle I can click on it if I want everything selected over here in the objects panel I can si simply click on the word design and notice it puts the box around everything similarly if I want to do something let's say let's move these apart a little bit when I click on something to highlight it notice this little square in the middle and my my cursor turns into a hand I can move that then but let's say I want to I want to change something over here from a line to something else well look, I'm getting ahead of myself let's not do that yet so this is the design page right here this is a design and these are the objects in it this little tab is used um, to tell us uh, there's a different page so in other words if I open another page notice it's untitled number three if I open another page it's untitled number four once I have saved it it will no longer say untitled this or that it will say you know the name notice this one has an asterisk on it that means I've done something on this page but I haven't saved it yet so if I save it it will have the name up there and no asterisk okay so let's look over here again at this properties area over here here's the objects panel and the properties panel the properties page well let's look and see when I expand this design and I click on one thing okay I have to be in create mode click on one thing I can add a stitch property to it a stitch type to it once I add a stitch to this I'm going to have a lot more things that I can do in this properties area so for example if I'm in stitch artist create mode and I click on this second button over here and it says run it's going to change that circle into run stitches just like that so now if you look over here in the properties panel you'll see it says it's a run stitch it's a single run and the length of the stitches are 2.5 millimeters so we can actually go up here to the stitch simulator now and we can watch that run now remember nothing's going to happen with the other objects because they are just lines they're not stitches but when this one runs we can see what it's doing okay let's let's select that run again and oops, let me get that and be in stitch create mode and select it and again we have these options down here right now the type was a run and it was a single stitch a single run I can change it to a double or a bean chain back stitch stem I'll change it to a stem because that would be fairly easy for you to see as soon as I click on stem it's going to change it just like that okay there it is
perfect. Okay, let's click on the star for a second. And let's go up here to, we're in create mode still, and you can tell that because of these different stitches. Let's do a fill stitch on the star. Perfect. Okay, once we've done that, we can come back over here to the properties panel. Notice there's color, shape, and fill. So the color is easy to change. Once you have the color right here, you can click on it. And if you have threads selected right here, and you can go through here and choose any thread color you'd like. Okay. Now these happen to be the Janome thread colors. You can change the colors that it's choosing from or the threads by using this drop down arrow. Most of the time I use Floriani. So I would change mine to Floriani. And I will show you some more about that in a little bit. But for Floriani, the color I've chosen, Midori Green. Okay, so there we have that and I can say okay. And also over here, remember it says shape. Well, check this out. For the star, it gives us these options, numbers of sides. Look at this. Isn't that cool? Okay, and then the fill. We can choose what kind of pattern we use for the fill. Right now, let me scroll way in for you. I'll come up here to the magnifying glass. Scroll way in. This is called tatami. And you can see that over on the right side. The pattern is tatami. I can change it to brick. I can change it to snake. Uh, waves. There's lots of different things that you can change it to. Waves and other waves. Scales, cornrow. Cornrow one, cornrow two. So there's lots of things that you can do. Um, additionally, you can change the length of the stitches and we'll learn more about this later, the edge and so on. One other thing that's over here is this. We can adjust the underlay, which we're not gonna mess with that right now. And let me grab that again. We could also get this little bow tie what the bow tie is, let's click on it and see. That is so that it will tie in at the entry. And by the way, where your stitching starts, there's this green bow tie. Where it ends is the red bow tie. So let's watch the stim stitch, stitch simulator and you'll see it's going to start up here and it's actually going to end up here. And then I'll switch it a little bit. So let's speed this up a tad and click here. And there it goes. Maybe I've sped it up too much. Let's play it again, Sam. Let's see, so. Oh, it's doing this one too, but that's okay. Okay. Now it's going backwards. So I want to move it all the way back to the beginning again. And I'm going to hit play. So it's going to start, it's doing the purple one first, the violet one. Then after it does that, it's going to come to the green one right here. And it's going to start at the top, remember, it's going to go all the way around. Then it's going to start doing the, the um, underlay. This is all the underlay to keep it all nice. After it's done with the underlay, it'll start doing the fill stitch. Starting up here, it's traveling around a bit. Try to remember the way this is going, just in general, because you're gonna see as soon as I change where the start and stop are, it's going to look a lot different. So that's how it's gonna stitch out. So it started at the top and then it's ended at the top. Okay. All right, so let's go back to the create mode. I'm gonna click on this guy again. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, let's see, I can come up here to this compass rose 
to move this a little bit better. There we go. And I'm going to make it so it starts at the top, but notice I have the little bow tie selected. I'm going to make it end down here at the bottom. Maybe not totally at the bottom, but right inside the bottom like that. So now let's see what happens when we do the stitch simulator. Let's see if it looks any different. I'm going to bypass the violet color and we'll start right here. So it started at the top. It's doing the underlay again all over. Then it's going to start doing the fill stitch. So notice how it's more going from the top all the way to the bottom. And it's going to end in that very last part in the middle on the bottom. So that's just the stop and start. So let's go back to create mode. And so far we have a run. We have a fill. Let's do one more thing. Create mode we can do a motif run. Okay, so let's bring this over here using the compass rose again if I'd like. I get that little rectangle right there. Okay, and let me draw this rectangle a little bit better for you this time. I'm going to delete this one by hitting delete on my keyboard. And I'm going to come up here to create mode. Come to this and the rectangle and I think I'll do it as a run so it's going to automatically be a run stitch perfect notice it's going to start and stop right here in the upper left hand corner but remember I decided I wanted to make it a little bit different so rather than making it just a plain run I'm going to with it selected I'm going to come up here and say motif run. So that's going to make it a little bit different. Let's look at motif. So what I did was I clicked over it was on color and I'll change its color show you that again. Now right now we're in threads. These are all the threads that are available. If I go to palettes this shows me the two colors that I'm using in this particular design or this page. I'm going to go to threads because I'm going to choose something totally different and maybe I'll make something a little bit darker. There, Firefly it's called. Okay, so again I'm going to come down here now to the properties panel, click on motif, and to add right now this is just a run stitch. If I want to add a motif to this I have to use the plus button and I want you to look here, category larger cross stitch, decorative, all these different kinds of motifs are available. So I'm going to do decorative just for fun and I'll just do decorative number one just because it's right there. Whoa, look at decorative number one looks like. That's pretty weird. I'm going to try a different one. Actually, maybe I'll add one in with this. I'm going to come to motif. I think I'll also go to knots and candle wick okay so then what it did was it added a candle wick stitch in between those other things well maybe i don't like the decorative one i can highlight that over here and say minus and it gets rid of it and then all i'm left with are the candle wicks now the height and the width of the candle wicks can be adjusted over here and i can make space in between them by checking this out, the gap, okay? Or I can change the width. That squishes them out. Or I can change the height. Wow. Or I could change nothing. Now, there'll be, you notice this line in between here, that will be there. There would be a way 
that I can show you, but it's a little bit more advanced to get rid of it, to get rid of that little thing right there. And let me, oh, I'll show you that later. That's a little bit more advanced. Okay, so we've gone over the, the design panel, the objects panel. We have three objects right now. If I wanna see all three at one time, I can come to the compass rows and say, hoop, and that goes to my hoop and it lets me see everything. Um, we've also come down here to the properties panel and depending on what we have selected, we get to do different properties, different things, if we're in the create mode. So this one was a motif. I can change its color. I can change the motif by adding one or taking one away. Furthermore, of course, I can put in my um, tie in an entry and an exit and the shape I can change that okay the star that was a fill right so when I click on that notice okay motif look at the options in the properties color shape motif when I click on fill color shape fill and I can change the pattern for my fill when I click on the run stitch, color and run, and I have different types of run stitches that I can choose. Okay. I think, let's see, did I say I was gonna show panning? Yes, I think I was going to show panning now. So one of the things that you can do, let's pretend like you're way scrolled in, maybe at a uh, six to one, and so, oh, you want to work on, I'm going to do six to one, this right here, and you want to add some more stuff over on this side. So if I'm going to go ahead and add some more things, I'm going to show you how I'm doing it later. Right now, all I want you to see is the um, one way that you can move things without having to worry about where you've been. So for example, if I'm right here, this is draw with points, and we're going to learn much, much more about that. But if I'm drawing with points, and I'm drawing a line, and I'm drawing over this way, and I get all the way to, notice how that's going all by itself? Okay, when you get over there, that's panning all by itself. And sometimes that works really, really well, and sometimes it drives me nuts. So another thing you can do is hold down your um, space bar and that changes your cursor into a hand and you can move this to wherever you need to. So for example, if you're still doing that, um, this stitch right here, draw with points and you're doing a run and you start and you're drawing with points and you get all the way over here, you can just grab your hand, move it over and continue on. Now, sometimes I find that a little bit easier but that's just something else that you could work on. Okay, one last thing or two last things I wanna show you are the guidelines and show and hide. Now, sometimes you might want a reference line that is not on your main grid. So what you can do is place your mouse in the area of the ruler right here and you can hold and drag down. Okay, do you see that little dotted line I'm dragging down? in case I know exactly where I want something to be. And suppose I want something at the intersection here. I can come over to the left-hand side and drag a guide in like that, okay? When I'm done using the guides, all I have to do is take it and put it back up on the ruler and it gets deleted. And you can tell when you're at it because see how my cursor changes and I can put this one over that side and that's gone. The other thing is the show or the show and hide buttons. And these could sometimes drive you a little bit nuts. So we're not to this part yet, but I'll show you image. You can bring in an image, okay? So there's the image. And I don't know if you can tell or not, but this image is, since I brought it in as a background, you can see it's kind of transparent behind it. That's because right here, as soon as you bring in an image, it brings it in somewhat transparent. I can make it so it's not transparent at all, I can make it totally disappear. But let's just pretend what I'm going to do now is, uh, let's get rid of this one. I'm gonna hit delete on my keyboard and I'm gonna, see this button right here? It says show or hide the background image. 
I'm going to click that off for a second. Sometimes that gets clicked off and it's going to really mess you up. Because watch, when I go to image and I try to bring in that same image, and I can see over here in my objects panel that it's there, but it's not on my screen. It's not in my hoop. Always remember, always, always remember, this is going to happen to you, I promise. <laughs> Come over here to the Show or Hide Background Image button. Click on that, and there it is. And if you click on it again, it's gone, here, and gone. The one below it is Show or Hide Stitches. Okay, so imagine you're doing the draw with points, and we're going to learn much more about this, and you're going to do a run stitch. And we're drawing this around, just a little fun shape. I'm going to hit the tomato shape to close that. And as I said, it's a run stitch, and you can see that over here in the objects panel, it says run. Those are run stitches, right? Those don't look like run stitches to me. That looks like a line. Let's scroll way in and look. Okay, that's just a line, that's not run stitches. However, over here, that little eyeball looking thing with stitches, I'm not sure what it is, but if you click on that, it says show or hide stitches, aha, uh -huh, there are your stitches. So remember, if you bring in an image, open, you can't see your image, you know it's here somewhere because you see them in your objects panel Click on Show or Hide, and there they are. And if you want to show or hide your stitches, just click on that like so. So that's it for today. Uh, I'll be back again very soon with in lesson number two or class number two in Stitch Artist Level 1. In the meantime, get your manual out, look at it, put notes in it, Rewatch re this video and kind of do the same things that I'm doing as I go. So I hope you like this, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now. Oh, if you don't have Stitch Artist Level 1, I do have links for you down below for it. I appreciate it when you use my links because it helps to keep me motivated and to keep me going. So thanks again. Bye for now.